Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is February 13th, 2013, and this is a, a really a kickoff show, I want to say. Um, back in November, Joel Malley and Jennifer Wolven um, volunteered. I don't think you guys know what you volunteered for, but <laughs> volunteered to set up this uh, um, OLE, um, this online learning experience, uh, through the National Writing Project. And I saw that and said, hey, you guys, you should uh, come on uh, TTT, and uh, we can kind of connect there, too. So it's great that we've set up a few um, dates into the future. Um, and then you guys are going to explain what you're doing on that, um, on that site a little bit tonight. Um, and we have a couple of guests already lined up. Um, which will be fun to kind of connect with also. So this is the first show in a series of what may look like five, Joel, believe it or not. Sounds um, great. Over the spring, where we'll um, continue to connect on TTT and at that site, talking about um, connected learning. Uh, let's quickly go around and do introductions, if we can. Jennifer's not here yet, but the rest of us are here. and Lots of people in the chat room. You'll notice that we have room for three or four more people, three p more people to jump into the to the Hangout. Feel free to do that if you'd like. Um, and even if it's your first time, we'll help you, and we are very, we're patient <laughs> with getting you in. So welcome, everybody. Uh, Chris, why don't you start with some introductions? And uh, Joe, you have any idea how, how we could introduce ourselves uh, playing with connected learning? <laughs> There you go. There's transparent planning. Sure. Um, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll just so just uh, mention it somehow in your introduction. So there you go. We'll, that, yeah. we'll have to use that word as a code word of some sort. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach English and media, high school English and media, at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I just joined the Connected Learning Inquiry Group site. Uh, I think it was a couple days ago. Uh, and, you know, I've been thinking about connected uh, research, especially, that my students have been doing. Yeah, I definitely want to get into that. So I think we'll have time tonight to talk about all of that. I, you've also called it uh, social? Well, social scholarship, yeah. Social scholarship, yeah. And connected research, yeah. So that'll be a great uh, introduction. Chris uh, helped start uh, t uh, Youth Voices now a good decade ago, I think. So um, old friends here, so welcome. And I'm sorry, you just came in, but would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> Go ahead. Hi. So, hi, welcome. Um, my name is Yvonne oh, Hayden. Yvonne. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, I, I think I've only met a few of you. Uh, my name is Yvonne Haining. I have been a teacher. I've worked in the nonprofit sector for about 15 years. I've worked uh, with a number of different foundations, and I'm currently building an educational technology startup that's built around connected learning and how we connect our paths through all different learning objects. So I am uh, <coughs> fascinated by the conversation and eager to see how I can plug in. Cool. Joe, you're next on my screen, so. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, my, my name is Joel Malley, and I teach at Chitawaga Central High School right outside of Buffalo, New York. And uh, I've been teaching for a number of years, first in the Buffalo Public Schools and now, now at Chitawaga, which is an inner ring suburb. And um, when I started getting involved in the connected learning conversation, I was just kind of curious. Like, um, I remember back to college um, reading Horace's Hope and, and hearing about all these classrooms mm. that kind of extended beyond uh, those four walls. And I've kind of been thinking about my own classroom. And while I do a lot of digital writing with my kids, while I try to um, you know give my students a lot of choice, and while I see other components of connected learning in my classroom, I want to see what, I kind of want to study what, what, what connected learning classrooms look like like what are the exemplars what are people doing out there and um, you know over the years my experience with National Writing Project and the Western New York Writing Project um, any endeavors they do it's always great conversation great learning and um, really well-informed people who are far more informed than I am so I figure what better way <laughs> than to uh, get myself into a, an online learning experience with uh, a bunch of educated folks so that's where I'm coming from very cool. 
And John, we were joking before we started uh, recording here that you're the wizard. Do you want to explain what that means? <laughs> sure. Hi, I'm John Barloni. I'm the community manager for the Digital Media and Learning Research Hub at, based at UC Irvine. And I also produce the ConnectedLearning.tv webinar series, oh. usually as the, uh, the silent producer, the faceless person kind of running the show. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the inside joke there. But uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to jump off in a few minutes here about what I wanted to get across is that um, I love this process of people just kind of uh, taking the ball and running with it in terms of helping share these stories about what's possible with learning mm -hmm. and um, just encourage people to just keep sharing um, just like Joel was talking about we need exemplars we need um, to figure out what's working for other people what isn't and kind of bring each other all along on this journey and are are you all happy with Google, uh, with Hangouts and it's working out and everything for you? Uh, we love it. Yeah. Okay. Just to, cool. So come and go as you please. Thank you for stopping by, Lacey. You're next. Hi, I'm Lacey Manship, and uh, okay, uh, yep. Lacey Manship, UNC Charlotte Writing <laughs> Project. Um, so I'm an associate director there. Also, these days I'm a lecturer in first year writing, at UNC Charlotte. Um, my history, though, is um, in elementary school, kindergarten and first grade, um, which puts me in a really cool position in the writing project and working with first year writing um, and is actually really connected to um, an inquiry project our site is taking up right now um, in thinking about connected learning as um, a way for us to connect our um, first year writing TCs and program and our K-12 TCs and um, classrooms. So I've been thinking a lot with my students, um, first year writing students this semester um, in connection with um, Sally Griffin's high school students, um, bringing them into conversation together, talking about um, an inquiry <laughs> into inquiry, um, using thinking about connected learning principles together, along with a bunch of other um, critical literacy stuff, which has been really awesome. So that's some of my, like, right now digging in experience. Um, also, at our site, um, we've been, we're been thinking about connected learning and um, working up to our spring conference that we'll have this April, we're going to have Peter Elbow here and thinking about how, like, I don't know, old school writing project hooks up with the new thinking about connected learning. Um, so I can t I'd love to talk later about um, our project we have right now, um, five weeks at Elbow. We're trying to hook up some conversation on Twitter. Um, and let's see, I've joined in with the connected learning um, OLE and getting my toes wet in there, <laughs> introduced myself tonight, um, and, you know, have been introduced to Connected Learning through the writing project, through um, the sort of ongoing conversation over the last year. Very cool. Cool. Welcome. Leah Jensen. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Leah, and I'm from Oakland, California, and I work for Oakland Unified School District. And I've uh, been there for about 15 years now. And I, too, started in elementary. Um, I ran the Digital Media Center with the library. Um, so I have a library background. Um, and now I'm with two other project managers in tech services. We're leading uh, reform in our district, which is really interesting. Um, everything's always from the ground up where we are because it's very dysfunctional, which I'm sure many urban districts, but New York seems to be working pretty well in my eyes. Um, <laughs> and we are, we are moving to, we have this grand vision of full service community schools, um, which means that learning won't just take place in the confines of two walls, but that it should be ongoing anywhere, anytime. But this is really hard for teachers and um, stakeholders to conceptualize. So we, the, my two buddies, colleagues, we, we, we scoured around and with some help from a, some Elise from National Writing Project, we got hooked up to Connected Learning TV. Yay. 
and uh, <laughs> watched the videos and we're like, this is it. This is the key in right here. So um, we grasped on to those principles and actually named our team Connected Learning Team. So we just borrowed that, you know. Um, and uh, we are now engaging teachers and uh, principals and our and all our content specialists who do professional learning with teachers on rethinking what teaching and learning is because now moving towards giving students devices and rethinking what the classroom should look like and what kids are doing outside of the classroom um, we, we really are pushing people to th rethink what that all looks like so we're, we're on this journey too um, and uh, and we're just trying to stay two steps ahead of everybody else. So I'm really excited to be part of this panel and learn from everyone and, uh, and want to seek those exemplars as well. So Sounds like so much more fun than answering vendors' phone calls, which is what your job should be, <laughs> I gotta say. All right, so. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. Cool. So I'm Paul Allison, and I do teach in uh, in the Bronx at the Bronx Academy Senior High, and um, been uh, I was teaching at when Horace's uh, Horace's Hope came out when you were in college, Joe. I I was uh, teaching at a coalition school, um, and we we scoured those pages thinking. Did Ted write about us there at all? <laughs> but um, so, so I've uh, been uh, playing around with those ideas for for a very long time. These um, so, um, but very excited to think about. Also, Peter Elbow has is coming to New York City as well, and and um, if I could point to all the places on Youth Voices where his voice is is <coughs> still there, um, it would be it, it's kind of almost embarrassing. Um, and, and the very quick story. I'll tell uh, is um, when Digital Is was kicking off. They did a um, um, a day long um, workshops, and Courtney Kasdan came. And Courtney Kasdan is like a, a real hero of mine as well um, in in my intellectual life and uh, in terms of language and learning. Even though I know she deals with the younger ages, but um, and she was at my workshop, and she said, "You have remediated uh, Peter Elbo." Um, and and that that kind of like has been the compliment of my life. I really love that she said that. But at any mm -hmm. rate, um, that that's uh, some of some of me. Um, and um, in Anna Smith, uh, you popped in here, and then Jennifer Wolven looks like she's trying to come on, and we'll we'll uh, kind of get started with more open conversation here. Anna, would you introduce yourself? You bet. Hi, I'm Anna Smith. Um, I know most of you through our connected <laughs> learning space. <laughs> so um, I thought I would just pop in. I wanted to see faces and hear voices tonight. I saw so many of you were on. Um, I uh, Most recently, I've been working with um, the literacies chat that's been on, um, that we work through on Twitter, and um, also working with a series with Kevin Hutch. Hodgson, dog tracks on Twitter. I mostly only know him through Twitter, on what it what it means to compose digitally as well through um, the National Writing Project's Digital Is website, and then um, on literacies we've been talking about um, how <coughs> how to understand in school and out of school writing and literacies and new literacies, and um, looking at uh, most recently connected learning as a way to understand that, um, I give it a new framework for us. So um, I was just interested in the topic tonight and hearing more about what, what you all are doing. Cool. That's a nice um, introduction to where I think we might be going next, Joel. Uh, please take over, Joel, as much as you'd like here. And you know, it's, it's going to be hard to shut me up, but please feel free to. <laughs> um, but the um, so one of the things Joel, Jennifer, and I talked about um, just to kick off the show is to try to get some definition of this new framework, as you say. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm also, um, as you could tell from my introduction, really interested in, in something I think Lacey said about how um, we're bringing um, progressive traditional writing project kinds of things into a new framework <laughs> and, and, and what that means. Um, so I guess Joel, is there a better way to say that? But just sort of like, how are you defining connected learning? And we will get into the nitty gritty of what that site is all about. But um, let's start with some definitions. <laughs> Who'd like to jump in on it? 
Yeah, I think that one of the th one of the reasons why I'm here <coughs> is to help define for myself what connected learning <coughs> is and you know what that might look like in my classroom. Um, as far as my definition outside the confines of that uh, great infographic that's over at Connected Learning TV, um, I'm not too, too sure how, how, how definitive I can get with it. Um, but I just have this vision of Connected Learning as um, learning that's useful, learning that's purposeful, um, learning that is situated in, in, in life, learning that students have control over, um, learning that, 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 that really matters. And I think, um, you know, my general feel-good definition is probably kind of encompassed by all those things at this point. Anybody else? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I was thinking about this... Um, a little bit earlier when I was adding my introduction to the um, OLE site, and which, yeah. by the way, on the ta on Titan board, there is a link to all of our introductions. So go ahead. Well, cool. yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking that you know what connected learning is for me be is um, you know beyond the design principles, it's a conversation, um, and I think the design principles, I don't know, they really like jive to the things that. Um, I've been committed to as a teacher um, and resonate and kind of, I don't know, I was like, yeah, that's, you know, that's it. That's, those are the things. And somebody's made a cool infographic. But like what it does beyond that is creating this conversation space where people are like have um, a, a place um, which isn't a single space um, to talk and um, to enter dialogue about this stuff. So I don't know, that seems like a really, interesting and important part of it to me is connected learning as a conversation space. Uh, I'll jump in. Go ahead, Lynn. Um, right, just, oh, oh. Uh, by the way, remember most people will not see this, so mentioning okay. your name right before you talk is a great thing. Oh, They'll okay. hear it more likely. But go ahead. All right. <laughs> Um, so this is Leah Jensen from Oakland. Um, so I'm part of a project this year. And we're partners with the National Running Project in Mills College. And it's called Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age. And we've been really, um, uh, it, the, the project is about um, uh, teaching civic educa education and then having the students actually participate in a form of civic engagement based on that. So linking um, historical um, accounts, having them learn about that, identify what the civic engagement was in that, and then taking on something in their own community and then actually becoming civic, civically engaged. And so we've been doing a lot of talking about what that is, um, what is being civically engaged, and, and you know, being that there's lots of parts of Oakland just like the Bronx and New York and other urban, large urban districts, the, there's our students are. It's, it's a it's part of being empowered, and the learning could be really powerful to be connected with others, um, to know to to not feel isolated in um, where they are, and then really feeling like they can make a difference. So I'm kind of linking in the principles of what connected learning is with that in in thinking in those terms of being civically engaged. Okay, let me um, try to be, well, I don't know, uh, <laughs> so that it's not like all good feeling, uh, connected learning is everything, right? Because if it is everything, then um, it's, it's not very useful on some level. Mm -hmm. um, so let's try to kind of define it maybe like where, where it's not. <laughs> and, and, okay. and, Right, and, and so maybe a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense, much sense to do that, but let me put it out there. But And, and so one of the things I want to say, and I'm not going to say it not here, is that it is about technology, I think. Um, and I, I want to say that. So that for <coughs> me, um, I, I, it, it is true for me that I can't imagine teaching without computers and the Internet anymore. Um, and mm -hmm. so that, that is part of what being connected means. Um, right. that, that's the kinds of languages and thoughts and ways kids interact with each other. Um, so, 
so I'm not satisfied to, to have this really uh, amorphous term that leaves out technology. So I, I, I want to kind of say that and see mm -hmm. if there's any thoughts about that. <laughs> this is Anna Smith. Yeah. Um, well, I, I was I, thinking I ahead. that, oh, okay. I was thinking <laughs> that something else that distinguishes, and I think that it's related to this technologies piece, is, mm -hmm. is the focus in connected learning on making and on production. And that the learning is something that's um, that's productive in in nature. That that it isn't receptive. The focus is not on you know learning a body of knowledge by receiving it, but but I do that by making by by the, that's the the creative yeah. edge. That's the digital making edge, and I think that's where technologies come into play. So digital, and I and I last conversation we had with. Um, John and I noticed that that he had to leave. Um, he was trying to say that, that that they're not trying to push just digital technologies, um, but open it up to other technologies. But but I agree with you that there is something about um, what with the affordances of our digital technologies now to create those spaces where we can all be makers um, mm -hmm. and produce. Uh, types of texts and types of knowledge that we weren't able to do without these particular digital technologies. And it's a hybrid. Um, if you look at the way, you know, for instance, being able to access anything at any time on the mobile is a great piece to start with, but some things are very hands-on and social. And so uh, this weekend I had uh, the pleasure of going away with some people and designing what a mobile innovation lab looks like and being able to just roll into a, a a parking lot and open up like a full prototyping lab with every type of tool you could possibly want to get your hands on and how does that physical interact with the digital um, because the two go hand in hand frequently it's not one or the other anymore it's how do the two fit together in relationship and then how do our relationships not become myopic like we get lost in our device and can't have a regular conversation with people mm -hmm. So yeah, can, I'm just, go ahead, Joel. But I, I, can I can I slow you down a little bit, Yvonne? Could you? What, what was that again? A mobile? <laughs> uh, what? A mobile <laughs> In a innovation lot? lab. What? <laughs> a maker like a uh, if you can imagine a container on a flatbed that folds out and becomes a classroom. <laughs> has all of the different tools you would need to create anything on site, um, mm -hmm. and it becomes a place to learn maker skills. Um, and it's it travels outward. And it's connected to the internet, I assume. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh -huh. yeah. But it's designed for things like um, Maker Fair, for instance, to be able to have a pull-out classroom, or even just an arts festival in a local community. Yeah. Interesting, Joel. I interrupted you. No, <laughs> oh, no. You know, I just wanted to throw in there and thinking about um, and thinking about technology and its role in connected learning and can we have connected learning without technology um, and there's a comment before about the affordances of technology I'm even I'm just looking at some of those core principles of connected learning that don't immediately have to do with technology even the fact that uh, connected learning is interest powered and mm -hmm. I think about you know the affordances of technology to open up worlds to kids that you know they never knew existed um, right. options and things to make that they never knew existed it's like so much I mean obviously I'm kind of stating the obvious but so much is passed along um, you know do these tools that these kids immerse themselves in uh, mm -hmm. you know the, the YouTube's all that other stuff and makes worlds available and I think so mm -hmm. even the ones that aren't immediately apparent um, are heavily kind of you know heavily, heavily imbued with technology mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, um, I was having two um, maybe parallelish thoughts around the thinking about technology, and um, you know, when I said earlier that really the connected learning stuff, like jobs with, you know, my my teaching history, my teaching practice, that really is specifically an early childhood teaching tradition in which children are making stuff and doing stuff, and there's mm -hmm. open spaces for block play, and I mean. I should show you this room I'm sitting in. There's blocks scattered everywhere. There's paper and glue and tape and stuff. It's um, behind you. We see a little. Yeah, you see, there's some. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my kids are making stuff, and it's actually pretty daggum low tech, except it's not because I'm always documenting everything you know happening around here. Um, so that side, and then I also um, I'm always thinking about um, 
Nancy Welsh's book um, that in which she talks about um, you know old school technologies in um, in protests and things like I, her, the example that sticks in my head is the idea of you know distributing information through you know bed sheets um, you know big signs um, in um, you know spray painted or painted on bed sheets as a way to get information across um, and. So actually, to me, the fact that technology isn't implicit there um, rather makes me happier because um, I think it, it points to, you know, the histories that we have um, both in education and in social activism of, um, you know, being in conversation with each other mm -hmm. without, some, without some of the digital parts. Now, I love the digital parts. I think they're awesome. They do really cool things. And, and also... Um, I, I'm really interested in the convergence and the histories of, uh, you know, pre some of that stuff, pre Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, let me rush to say that you can also have technology without being connected, right? I mean, when mm. they take when they're using computers to <laughs> to learn to type and take tests, um, they're we're not being connected. So, yeah, and 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 I would th the reason. The reason I would like, I, mean, I hear what you're saying, Lucy, about implicit, but the reason I like to, to make it explicit at some point is I want to say to the older teacher who is a connected teacher but isn't using technology, like, all that wonderful stuff you're doing, we're doing over here too, right? It's, it's not like, mm -hmm. so, you know, so it, it feels, I want to make it an invitation in some way, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it is also about, like, there's so much we can do now that we weren't able to do before. So, anyway, we can we can keep going on that if we want a little bit. There, there's another uh, one other limitation thing that hit, hits me, and 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 that is it, it came up actually in a in a connected TV um, where a couple of weeks ago, where a student of mine was describing her use of youth voices, and we were talking about you know Facebook and sh and so forth, and and should that be in school. And and I wonder I, I got I had this aha like I didn't know this but I think some people um, in the research community and so forth define connected learning as when students um, outside of school um, lives in technology come into school and I was starting to make an argument for or start thinking about really like whether we want that or we want to kind of create separate spaces and you know sometimes they overlap sometimes they don't I don't know mm -hmm. but I just want to say I, I do think there are definitions of connected learning that other people have and so you know figuring this out together is useful yeah I think that um, I, I saw this conversation over at the connected learning Google Plus community Mm -hmm. um, something very, something very, very similar, um, and and people were tossing the ball around like, well, you know, some kids want to keep their online identity separate from their school identity. They don't want to mm -hmm. bring in their Facebook or they bring in their Twitter. And what I thought was a compelling argument somebody made was that, yeah, that's okay, that's fine. Let's let's see if we can create some communities that really need to exist, and then within those communities, teach our kids those valuable skills, those networking skills, those um, you know, those sharing. Mm -hmm. skills skills that we all value via Twitter and stuff like that. Let's uh, let's see if we can foster their growth within these communities we create as well. So I don't think it necessarily has to, you know, I think it's more about the skills, more about the learning than it is about mm -hmm. any particular um, particular network uh, per, per se. Yeah, um, one of the things that I've noticed in my class um, is, uh, you know, connected playing out in a lot of different ways and some ways that we maybe have talked about um, but strike me as maybe a little different is um, my students are kind of tapping into researchers social networks you know finding them where they live and that seems a little different so like uh, one student um, you know we were trying to find experts and they were saying like well I can only get a hold of this person on Facebook you know or this person uh, I, they seem to be really active on Twitter uh, and so that seems a little different to me now um, that my students are actually going into the places where people inhabit, you know, their their natural habitat for uh, 
their social networking, which is kind of different and exciting for kids because once they found them, uh, then they had these really interesting conversations with them, and that seems different than before how, like I used to teach, let's find some experts. And the other way that's kind of playing How did you out, used to do it? <laughs> well, like you, you would write... Uh, you know, digitally, I guess, in the early days, you'd try to write emails to people. You'd try to find them. And, uh, you know, there's problems with inundated e email boxes that people don't always respond there. But, yeah. And, and Chris, yeah. you have that early experience with, sorry to interrupt you, <laughs> but, yeah. um, with, with being a basketball coach and writing to basketball coaches. Wasn't that you? Right. That was via yeah. the U.S. mail, yeah. yeah. Right. So, <laughs> all right. Yeah. So you crowdsourced how to be a basketball coach by asking a bunch of guys through. Yeah, the and it was in Sports Illustrated for kids. Yeah, it was quite the quite anyway, the deal. But so, so there are some roots to what you're doing now. <laughs> but yeah, but, but I guess so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's finding them where they <laughs> where they live. I guess yeah. is the one thing. And then a conversation I just had with a girl, and then I'll get off. Uh, is she was talking about, you know, I can't be objective with my research. Um, you know, I'm really trying hard, but I find myself being an advocate a lot more. And of course, you know, I was like, yeah, go for it. Um, but, you know, like this role kind of came to her, even though she felt like, you know, as in, in, in school, like, you know, we've got to be objective and everything. And, and she, her thing, I'll put a link into her uh, Youth Voices stream. Her stuff is, has been all about... Um, alternatives to animal testing and, and her uh, epiphany came when she went to all these stores to try to enact the advice that she was writing in her paper and she found out how you know hard it is to walk the walk that she's trying to do because products aren't available that's where she started saying like I need to do something about this mm -hmm. so that uh, I will drop in there too because I think that's kind of an interesting little thing so Paul, that, that made me think of something that I might chime in with real quick. And it goes back to the technologies question, like does this have to do with tech technologies? I think that <coughs> something that Chris brought up that um, that our relationships and the ways that we, um, our roles, our relationships, and the ways that we interact with each other have changed, right? So so one of the affordances of our digital technologies is that we have the, these, the experts are, are more much more accessible. Um, and then we can we talk to them differently than we than we used to. We also did did letter campaigns. We used to have a class on writing a letter, and we would write to someone of importance, and and one student would get a response back, right? Mm -hmm. But those letters were were of a different nature. They weren't personal questions about how something interacts, and and so and so I think that we see this too as well. I'm thinking about. Um, there's a lot of initiatives right now with digi in digital humanities about um, uh, digitally based and bo born and based um, publications and looking at peer reviewing and, and see that a whole change of nature around how we do our academic disciplines. Um, mm -hmm. that, and again, our roles and our relationships are changing. So I think part of this connected learning is that we're connecting in new ways, mm -hmm. um, ways that were not mm -hmm. available to us, not just because of the technology, but because of what the technology has allowed us to do, we were connecting differently. I think that that maybe we should spend some time thinking about the word connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, and and conversation. I I, I wonder. <laughs> I don't know why I'm I'm, I'm the doubter tonight. But uh, th those those letters um, that that you wrote, I bet you spent a lot more time crafting them. Than Chris's students do in in writing to the experts, right? So that's that's one interesting difference. Um, I don't I don't know what that means terribly, but, <laughs> but worth I, I think that it. it's it's one of those the the question about whether old practices are being supplanted with new ones, or if it's one of those both and, right? Like we we will mm -hmm. still s send letters for certain occasions, but now we ha we we now also have a new way of of possibly connecting. Um, but yeah, I, 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 that's a good question. Like, are we losing is that question about do we lose the art or do we just have a new, a new way in addition to the old ones? Jennifer, you're Jennifer, here. You're here. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the stream off and you'll be here. <laughs> Got it. I, I, as Chris was describing the animal, was, was it animal rights or animal something? 
Um, yeah, it was uh, animal testing, you know, mostly for cosmetics, but animal testing yeah. in general for human but gain. and then and then going out into the community and and meeting people i was i was trying i was wanting to come back to leah and ask what you guys in oakland are thinking about like how much time are they going to be spending or have your teachers thought about doing civic actual work um i mean is that or is the student that chris explained engaged when she's doing a research project and going out and meeting somebody and then coming back and doing more research. Like what's the balance between doing stuff in the community and doing research? <clears throat> well yeah, we're in this phase right now and I think that what he described is that in fact there was a <clears throat> we had um, and the teachers are pushing more to understanding what that looks like. So right now mm -hmm. the kids um, in a high school class, these are juniors, they got into groups of four and they had to choose an issue, a civil rights issue today. And so these four girls chose the cosmetic issue um, in what is beauty, are some women you know, preferred in jobs because they may be more beautiful than others. And then in, they had to choose uh, an evidence, they had to research, so they were taught researching skills. And they had to do a presentation, so this was like a checking point in the project. And they had we had a panel um, of people from the community. I was there. Some other teachers from the the site were there um, to hear the presentations and then give feedback on what they should do with that research. Um, so, for instance, with these girls, their next they they like um, Chris, your your student, they. Um, they started to get real passionate about the animal testing. So whereas they first kind of stood out, uh, went out researching to find like examples of how women might be discriminated against or preferred for beauty, they got into this cosmetic thing and then were like, well, we want to go out and find out more. And, and, and it was sort of like, okay, well, what's that next step of becoming engaged? So they were going to go survey some areas, survey women in, you know, at the school site, but then also maybe out at a store and stuff and then go from there. So we're, that's, we're kind of there right now. There's a, just really defining what it is and the balance between the two, like you said. But it is a back and forth. And the other idea is, is when does it end? Like how do you know like, okay, this project's over. <laughs> like I did the research, I did the engagement, now, you know, or is it building on legacy um, and, and then continuing the work? So yeah, it raises some other questions in that area. How have you imagined what the legacy and the continuation would look like? Or? Well, I think the vi there was a video that was on our um, our connected learning team uh, hmm. with the guy Steve Vix, I think, in the South Bronx with that urban garden. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, th I think that's a perfect Steve, example. Steve Ritz, um, like the cracker. Oh, Ritz. <laughs> who, by the way, who, by the way, we connected to, and oh, we'll be cool. here in two weeks. Um, All on right. TTT, so. Yeah. yeah, he's Got awesome. It. Yeah, I think that's a perfect example of the legacy work of starting out and now they just are going, you know, it's just ballooning out and, and, and ever evolving. And, much, and as students come into his program, I'm sure they bring those ideas of what else they can do. And so, yeah, that to me, I'm, that's an exemplar of, of that research that, you know, the kids are learning vocabulary, reading, all those literacy skills without the focus being on, oh, we really need to teach these kids reading. It's like, we, we're building a sense of power and community and learning all those skills too and this legacy work. So I think that was the perfect example of that. Jennifer, welcome. Oh, you're almost there. Now you're going to need to unmute. Okay, good. unmuted. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I have tried so many different devices before I finally <laughs> figured out what was going on with my computer. I apologize. So you've invited somebody onto the show too, and it'll be a good thing that you yes. practiced this before he comes. <laughs> yes. Well, I know I've done it once before, but apparently I've lost all my skills. Yes, Will Richardson will join us on oh. our March twenty seventh. Okay, um, hangout. Is that right? March twenty seventh. Does that uh, sound right? I, I think I, that's right. Go check it while we're talking. Something okay. like that in the future. It's not tonight. It's not next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all I can handle. Hey, no, no, really. You know, so um, let me just uh, k k um, babble a little bit, and then um, and then I want to get. I want you guys to describe your site uh, that you have created and and the different weeks, and maybe we can break that down a little bit. Um, because I'm I'm kind of excited at my school. Uh, this one of the connected projects that that I'm 
just about to jump into, and I want and I want to comment on it in terms of how much um, it can be about starting anywhere. The walkout walk on one of the principles in that book um, is start anywhere, and and mm -hmm. it's so interesting to me. So we're we're right on the Bronx River, and right across the river from us, it's a literally uh, less than a ten minute walk. There's this organization called Rocking the Boat, where they build boats. And we're not going to build boats with kids, but we're going to build um, nest boxes for tree swallows, right? Oh, um, cool. and, and we're going to put them up in an area that that used to have woodpeckers that made little holes where the tr the swallows used to live, but now those trees don't exist, and so we're putting up these nest boxes and so forth. But um, so so and and it's connected also up. They're connected with with Cornell, which seems to be the center of swallow research. Um, which so so then I you know I found a researcher there who's been studying swallows you know for thirty years now, and and the kinds of things that he has learned about um, animal biology and uh, it's just kind of amazing what how important swallows these little birds are in in so much science research. Um, and and then <laughs> um, there's there's a woman who does civic ecology who who is all about you know helping young people use their knowledge of nature in their city in their neighborhoods um, to 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 really understand who they are and what their what their environment is all about mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. it, it seems like this simple little project where you're building boxes and if that's all we did um, that would be cool. But I think the the research component of it makes it important in some way, you know, and then so that they kind of understand, you know, yeah, we put up these ten boxes in the park, but there are other people doing that in New Jersey and other people doing that here and, and up in Michigan and, and they're kind of figuring out the mercury in the river and you know, so making those kinds of connections I think is, is really exciting. So I just wanted to mm -hmm. kind of throw that into the definitions. Um but Jennifer and um, Joel, we are kind of getting to the last 15 minutes here, so I want to give enough time to for you guys to kind of describe the site um, and say, that, and then we can go wherever we'd like. But w there were assignments each day, and I think Lacey and I were a day late on the introductions, but <laughs> we can do assignments late, right? <laughs> so kind of kind of describe how you set this up. Um, Sounds good. So we were um, so we were thinking about how to organize it and uh, thinking about where we were coming from and you know where other people were coming from too. Um, so what we just decided to do was you know why 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 try to go super complex with it? Let's just break down. Um, let's just break it down by the core principles that the Connected TV and the DML have kind of used to define it. And then just kind of, let's just go one by one and let's yeah, kind of do a do deep it. dive every two weeks into Could a new principle. Tell us what they are right now, again, Joel, if you don't mind. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, I'm going to have to read it. Sense. I'm not even going to act like I'm not going <laughs> to read it, but I have another I've screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are these core connected values, these core values. Um, and really quickly, those are equity, participation, and social connection. And then there's these other, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, principles that are rooted in other things, like that connected learning is interest driven, um, that it's supported by peers, that it's rooted in academics, which is, you know, obviously important given the many things, including the Common Core. Uh, like somebody mentioned earlier, it is production centered. Uh, kids are making, and it is openly networked, so we can kind of share and see and tell stories and so on and so forth, and that it has a shared purpose. So th those are the, the the principles of connected learning. Now, where I see it being um, murky is obviously none of these are mutually exclusive, right? So obviously when we take a look at, like, people uh, from session to session, people are going to go out into the world, Check out these different sites. Maybe it's Digital Is, maybe it's TED, maybe it's um, you know wherever they find good information and good stories, and then they're going to bring them back to the group so that we can all discuss them, mull them over. What's powerful about this learning story? How is it connected? Why does it matter? And so on and so forth. But obviously, when we do so, 
um, we're going to be seeing all these other aspects. So I think that this is like a really artificial way to kind of like break it down from the get-go. Um, but I think that it's a, it's a good way to start and a good way to really focus in on an area, but then also continue to think about these other areas as we, um, you know, as we move throughout the, the, this, this session. John, do you have... Uh... No, I think that pretty well um, sums it up. I mean, I think... I think part of what we hope for is that everyone will um, bring back resources and that we can really start to um, kind of build our own concept and, and see it happening. Um, I, I would love for us to, I began to look a little bit more at the um, Connected Learning re report that recently came out. Um, I think it would be great for us to look at that and, and really there's a huge focus on um, equity. Um, so I think that will probably become central in our discussions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing, you know, it's like we all live all over the country, right? We are all operating on our own playgrounds and and many folks are really active in Twitter or we have really full Google readers or read widely and it'd be nice to have a sandbox we could all come back to and kind of share toys and, and discuss what really makes us a powerful story. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and you guys have seeded the site. Obviously, uh, you mentioned um, Will Richardson's book, uh, Why School, and as as so, there are kind of tasks to kind of organize our our conversation. Is that how you've thought about it? Like, what 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 were the what were the first tasks? Um, well, the the first tasks was just had to do with the um, Stephen Ritz um, TED Talk. Um, and discussing that, and then um, with our second session, looking at um, the Will Richardson um, TED book. Um, but we we really haven't gotten too far ahead of ourselves because we want to see how things go, and as we begin mm -hmm. to pull in resources. But I think part of our thinking is that um, the that that some of the tasks will become um, communal, or that we will begin to all kind of add in um, with resources, and then kind of decide. Um, you know what where our discussions go yeah so we've we've started off uh, we started out the process with a little bit of Obi-Wan Kenobi but um, you know we're gonna <laughs> jump in and be Luke's after session two and I think you know I mean obviously this inquiry group is made up of a bunch of people who have a bunch of questions and we're gonna kind of um, and, and who also as I said are, are very well read and very intelligent and you know, we're just gonna we're gonna go where it goes after that. Cool. Um, and, and it ends when? <laughs> I think it has an end date. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it, 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 it has an end date. It's uh the end of May, and then we have uh, I think we're doing one final one final wrap up talk here on teachers teaching teachers. I think the date is June fifth. I think that. Uh, I think that's accurate, somewhere in there. Yeah, seven years into TTT, my wife said, see, you can have an end date. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <Good joke. laughs> but, but yeah, that, it's interesting. Um, you know, if you don't mind, um, we, Lacey and I could talk a little bit also about the, the five weeks of elbow and as another example of um, connecting that we've been trying to do. Lacey, do you want chart out what you were imagining there and then I'll throw in some things. Yeah, sure. Um, so we're having Peter Elbow out for our spring conference in April and just wanted to like gear up some conversation um, around our local TCs and people coming to the conference and then um, I started you know, thinking about Twitter and thinking about how we could start connecting up to more people who are you know, interested in talking with us, reading with us, talking about what we're reading. Um, our, Lil, our site director, r realized that you know, New York City was also having Peter Elbow out, so we wanted to like, you know, connect up with the TCs there who, and other people who might want to um, do some reading with us. So the basic thing is um, five weeks. We started, I think, January 8th, the last Monday um, <laughs> in January. Every week we have um, a piece from Peter Elbow um, that we are reading. Uh, then on Monday we have like a day-long tweet-up so people join in the conversation whenever they want to during the day. 
um, to talk about that piece of the week. And um, actually, you know, I've been emailing with Peter Elbow, and um, all these pieces are ones that he suggested that he thought people might like just um, enjoy reading and thinking about his his history um, as an academic and as a teacher. So, um, and also, you know, um, I am like have the sole responsibility for getting Peter Elbow onto Twitter. So we're like working on that and hoping by like you know these last two two weeks that. He might jump into the conversation. So I think it's totally interesting. Like in the um, either the introduction or the first chapter of his new book, um, he talks about Twitter, and um, he's not on there yet. But um, any day now. So. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's kind of the basics. It's you know um, pretty simple. Just reaching out to a bunch of people to jump into the conversation, um, and we've been posting to our UNCCWP hashtag. Um, and it, Paul has like taken it to amazing well, additional places. It, yeah, except that you know what, it, it's it's still just like a. a, a, a oh, I think that's worth mentioning that um, all of this is pretty fragile. In that um, we're we're just trying to figure it out. Like, like, so so one of the things that uh, some people know, um, Leah introduced me to to Guru. So I took the articles that that were available and put them in Guru and actually put them in Crocodoc first and then put them in Guru. Um, it's sort of this menu that, that, that we mess with. Um, anyway, the, um, and what that allows for is all of the articles to be kind of quickly available um, and annotatable. So, but, but so far not a lot of people have, a couple people have started to do it, um, which is interesting. Um, so that you can kind of annotate the article in a social way, getting back to Chris, your at least my one of the interpretations I'd like to play with around connected research and social scholarship is that it makes visible your thinking. So um, you know, to use Peter's mm -hmm. words for annotations, I mean he doesn't talk about annotations this way, but movies of the mind, if you can t do movies of the mind while you're reading right on the page and then so you can see somebody else's movies happening, um, there, there's kind of this dialogue that happens with you and the author and with the other people there um, who might be annotating with you. And, and then we, we um, and then within the Guru there's a tweet chat that people, makes it easy to find the, the Twitter chat around this that people are, are doing. Be great if uh, you get Peter in. I'd love to hear. So what? What's hold? Anyway, so there. So that's kind of exciting. Um, but but I did start that out by saying that it's like you build it, but people may not come. And you know, <laughs> unless and, and, it's my and students who are forced to join. Yeah, right. And that's kind of cool because we're just we're all just sort of figuring it out. And we all have busy lives, and you know. It's it's but, actually yeah. really interesting. You know, some of my students were posting this. This week and um, the, you know they got a bunch of feedback from teachers, people kind of, like asking them questions and things. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah. And so I um, I really would like to do more time um, with with Jennifer here sometime around Youth Voices because because your kids' contribution on Youth Voices this last semester has been wonderful. Thank you. Um, it's been great to get. Your your Texas kids in there. <laughs> well, they're um, having fun with it. Good, um, and and John is. So how does it work with John? Like you're you're the teacher, or he's the teacher, or no, we we are we are both teachers. Um, we the our, our our school is huge, and so we are both sophomore teachers. He has all um, pre AP, and I have a mix of um, inclusion, regular, and pre AP. So. He's got his students on, but we're pretty in sync with what we're doing, so that's okay. why it probably our posts look similar. Uh, okay, or the, so or the prompts at least. So the logos, are uh, those three words. What are the? Ethos, ethos, ethos. So, so yeah, I mean that was real interesting to see those pop up, and then um, mm -hmm. one of the things I did was was create a guide, but you created a yes. guide out of a guide that we had created. Yes, and it was just yes, like, talk was about connection, fun. but. I, <laughs> Yeah, but I'm hoping I'm hoping that 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 some of the um, like I would have loved. Let me just throw this in there. I would have loved for your students to to cite and to um, at least link to the original sources more, 
So in the guide, mm -hmm. I put the HTML for how to do that, right? So okay. it's like it's like we connect, but then we kind of try to go one one step up often, I think, which is yes, interesting. yeah, right. and that's kind of where we're what we're working towards. We have been right now. They've they've been looking at. Um, room for debate on New York Times and their opinion section and trying to kind of recreate that um, where they have a topic and in groups they are um, and that they've been doing research together um, and then they are writing their pieces um, from their point of view and, and the, the, the idea is that they will then have several different positions and stances around that topic that they've chosen um, and in some cases we are lucky enough that we have some that are very very opposite um, but that at that point um, they they will be expected to have hyperlinks and so we'll make sure we get those posted up on Youth Voices as well. They're <laughs> no, working I, I, on doing a Google site where they can try to make it look just like it does on um, Room for Debate. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that but it's um, they essentially uh, they, they look at a topic and then they'll have maybe anywhere from Five to eight experts who weigh in, you know, on different um, oh. uh, perspectives or different kind of different sides and stances from an issue. So, hmm. that's yeah, that'd be worth exploring. So we could share that back up on Youth Voices somehow too. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah interesting. Um, cool. <laughs> so as you were talking and as we were talking about student work, it strikes me that. One of the things that we as New York, as National Writing Project teachers, um, have is that we have student work, right? So, um, one of the one of the issues that that came up with Peter Elba's latest um, piece was, um, which was that that we read um, with with Lacey um, and and her writing project had to do with when to use home language and when to use um, language one and when to um, then revise it into more standardized languages, um, language. Um, and um, one of my thoughts as I was annotating and, and throwing back was, was that um, because of the media that we have now, maybe, you know, you, d you do a first draft when you talk um, and you record it and so forth. And so it was just a quick thought so that, that I w wanted to get his feedback on. And when he gets on Twitter, we can do it. But anyway, so, but, but the really cool thing is that on Youth Voices, um, a, a girl, it's right on the front page right now, but one of uh, Tommy Bateau's students did her first draft of talking in German. And then, and then right under it, you can see her English version that she's working out. So, so like how media comes into that whole question of when you use first language and, and when you use the standardized language is a, a really interesting question, it seems to me. My point of all that is this connected learning group that we're, that we're in, we have access to student work, and it'd be great if we could be sharing student work there as well, it seems to me. If that's a, yeah, I think that's yeah, a great as idea. As we tell our stories. Mm -hmm. um, Let's go around. <laughs> Sorry, I talked a lot tonight. Appreciate the ability, to, the, the permission to do that. But Chris, you know, let's just go right around and uh, hear some of your last thoughts, if you don't mind. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, you know I'm really interested in what's transpired here. I just you know registered for the connected learning site, you know, uh, the inquiry group, and then the the elbow stuff is really interesting too. So uh, I I see that that's actually there's some discussion stuff happening. There's a five weeks of elbow that's posted on NWP. So, uh, yeah, I'm interested in yeah. just kind of Lacey, anybody could join it, right? Yeah. Just, it doesn't have to be just us. Join it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks, Chris. Um, Jennifer. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm excited that we have you know gotten this going. I'm I'm excited. I actually got on after 45 frustrating minutes of um, moving from my iPad to the computer, which I basically just unplugged from a room and and brought it into the kitchen because my husband and baby were sleeping and. Then I tried my phone when I couldn't get volume, and then I finally got on. So I'm just happy I finally got here. Yeah, I've been there. So yeah, I'm glad you you managed. 
<laughs> and you know what? Every week it every week it, it happens again. So sorry, <laughs> but it gets a little easier as as we practice. Joel. You know what? Not much to say other than um, I'm just thinking about what we're all embarking on and how connected it really is. If I think about those principles, it's like we're all choosing to be here. We're choosing to look into this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to end up making something out of what we're doing. Our learning has purpose. And um, so I guess not to forget about what we're doing as a good model for uh, the type of good learning we want our students to, to do as well. Mm -hmm. So with that simple thought. I'll leave off. Cool. Lisa, you get last thought to me. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I'm just um, so interested in these moments, locations for conversation, and um, interested in inviting, you know, more people from our site, more um, people in um, our partnership schools into the conversation, inviting our students into the conversation. Um, yeah, mm. it's, it's cool. And Lacey tried to get uh, on to Youth Voices or some teacher or whatever, and you got to yeah. still work with those district folks, man. That, there's another there's another connection <laughs> that we need to work on. Things are I loosening mean, up you, around but, yeah. here. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, things are there's some some shifting happening. So, and interesting is connected to the actual physical technology that the district is spending money on, and now they're. Yeah, because they're buying iPads, they're willing to open some things up. So, yeah, we'll see. You know, but, but the, the whole notion of kids using their out of school technologies in school, we're things are going to have to change around some of those yeah. walls that have been built. So, yeah, cool. Well, thank you all, um, and uh, this will continue next week. We um, we're pulling together some people. Uh, I was going to look this up and I forgot right before the show, but it's the um, what is it? The uh, Bill of Rights for Digital Learning. I think I got that right. Um, Google that. We're going to talk about that and then invite a bunch of people to. Uh, Elise is uh, going to help, I hope, um, uh, us think about that. And um, uh, she'll be here and we'll invite some other people who are really interested in, in that um, document. So look at that and join us again next week. And the week after that, Stephen Ritz will be here. Um, he had a doctor's appointment tonight, but <laughs> and um, so it was really nice to meet him, and uh, we're, we'll uh, continue our conversations um, as we go into the spring. Thank you all. I um, want to say that uh, this will be up on teacherteachingteachers.org. Um, there's also a YouTube channel that goes up um, on kind of uh, within a half an hour, and then it will be posted at edtechtalk.com. And which is a channel of the World Bridges Network, and Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo manage all that for us. So thank you all. Um, and uh, if people want to get, uh, we should mention to this connected learning um, site. How would they do that, Joel? Just briefly. You know what I can. Do? So if they want to get involved with this connected learning site, mm -hmm. uh, if they want to invite, all they have to do is send me an email, and I'll make sure to do that. And I'll go ahead and type the email over in the uh, over at the EdTech Talk T T yeah. T site. Is that cool? That's cool. And I'll um, I'll find it and I'll put it up with with this if that's okay. If you get too much spam, let me know. Uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you all, and good night. See you next week. Thanks. Night. Other times too. Good night.